Welcome to ICD-10 CM Coding, your training course. My name is Robin, and I will be instructing on how to code in the ICD-10 CM Coding Manual. ICD-10 CM stands for International Classification of Diseases, 10th Revision, Clinical Modification. It represents a coding update from the current manual ICD-9 CM which is one that includes both DX and hospital inpatient procedure codes. WHO, which stands for World Health Organization, has separated the code sets into two coding manuals, one entitled ICD-10-CM for the DX codes and the other ICD-10-PCS for the hospital inpatient codes. PCS stands for Procedure Coding System. The ICD-10-CM is used to present and improve mortality reporting by monitoring certain categories and causes of death. The implementation date of the ICD-10 has been rescheduled for October 1, 2014, at which time all healthcare facilities should be utilizing the ICD-10-CM coding manual in place of the ICD-9. After successful completion of this course, you should be able to Know what's new in ICD-10-CM coding and recognize general coding guidelines. Understand chapter-specific coding guidelines. Use the alphabetic index to locate conditions that will lead to correct coding in the tabular section. What's new in ICD-10-CM? Laterality is now included in code selections. There are additional ambulatory and managed care encounters to select from. There are more injury codes that are grouped by anatomical sites. More combination diagnosis that include manifestations, poisonings, and external causes. More codes with a seventh character that determines encounter or sequela. There are now full code titles without the need for the fourth or fifth notation indicator. Complications during the post-operative period are now included in the PX specific body system chapters. They now have a placeholder, letter X, that is used for future expansion and to hold a place to remind the coder to append a mandatory seventh character. Diabetes mellitus codes include greater specificity. Volume 1 now has 21 chapters instead of 19, which includes the V codes and E codes. General Coding Guidelines. The two new chapters are I and Adnexa, which are your accessory structures such as the eyeball, eye muscles, lacrimal apparatus, and ear and mastoid process which plays a part in conditions affecting the hearing and balance. In Volume 1, all 21 chapters begin with a letter and are in alphabetical order, omitting the letter U. The external causes and factors influencing health status and contact with health services codes are no longer supplemental of the tabular section, but now have been incorporated into Volume 1. Those codes are now in Chapters 20 and 21, respectfully. The structure for Volume 2 is the same. You still have your main term and indicated subterms situation underneath. Your neoplasm table, table of drugs and chemicals, and external cause individual sections are still located in Volume 2 after the alphabetical index. Instructional notations are clues that help lead you to the best code selection. The Includes notation appears under certain categories for more instructions or to supply examples for clarity. B02, herpes zoster, directly underneath is your notation Includes, followed by conditions, shingles and zona, which means if the doctor uses the word shingles in the medical record instead of herpes zoster, we can still code in the B02 category. Excludes 1 and 2, both means not coded here. The codes above and after the exclude one notation should not be assigned at the same time because they cannot occur together. 
The codes above and after the exclude to notation indicate separate conditions that can appear at the same time and therefore can be billed as two separate codes. Please refer to your coding resource page entry number one, F17, nicotine dependence. Look at the exclude one notation, HX of tobacco dependency, Z87.891. The exclude one notation tells us that Z87.81 and F17.00 cannot be coded together and to only code one or the other. Look at exclude two, tobacco use during pregnancy, 099.33. The exclude two notation tells us that F17.200 and 099.33 are conditions that can happen simultaneously in a patient and therefore can be coded together using two separate codes. Code also is used when two codes are needed to fully describe the condition. However, correct sequencing is necessary. Code first and use additional codes indicate etiology and manifestation pair codes and they are still reported separately in ICD-10. The tables that were sporadically located throughout the tabular section of ICD-9-CM to determine fourth and fifth digit placement are now used to identify the seventh character in ICD-10. If the code has less than six characters, X serves as a placeholder to alert the coder to select a seventh character when a check mark is placed in front of the code. Please refer to your coding resource page Entry number two, S01.81X, laceration without foreign body of other part of the head. The X at the end is the placeholder that holds the sixth position, and the check mark at the beginning indicates a seventh character is needed. Always search the area prior to the code for your table. A table is located after category S01 that lists three possible choices for the seventh character, A, D, or S. Choice selection is based on the medical record and the patient's circumstance. Please refer to your coding resource page, entry number three. Let's take a look at category J68, which states code first, T51 through T65. Go to category T51, and in the notes you'll see the use additional code notation for manifestations. Punctuation also helps guide you to the correct code. All of the punctuation have the same meaning as they had in ICD-9-CM. Brackets represent synonyms, alternate words in explanatory phrases. Parentheses represent supplementary words that can be absent and not affect the code selection. A colon after an incomplete term is used to connect one or more modifiers to make it complete. A colon after an incomplete term is used to connect one or more modifiers to make it complete. A hyphen is found in both the index and the tabular sections at the end of a code. It represents more digits to follow in the tabular section. NEC, which stands for Not Elsewhere Classifiable, and is AKA, otherwise specified, indicates that there is not a specific code that exists. NOS, which stands for Not Otherwise Specified, is AKA unspecified, indicates a code of higher specification, is available if you query the physician for more information. NOS, which stands for Not Otherwise Specified, and is AKA unspecified, indicates a code of higher specification and is available if you query the physician for more information. The word and is equivalent to the words and or or. For example, if the code description states two anatomical sites such as the ulna and radius, the medical record only need one or the other of the sites in order for you to make that code selection. Steps to accurate coding. Identify main terms from the physician's documentation. 
Locate main terms in the alphabetical index, volume 2. Locate any subterms if applicable. Follow the directional instructions. Verify selected codes in the tabular section, volume 1. Follow the instructional notations and punctuation. Assign the codes to the highest specification. Coding practice. We have abstracted the condition hyperglycemia from the physician's notes. This is a condition of overproduction of glucose, sugar, in the bloodstream. Alphabetical Index, Volume 2. Please refer to your coding resource page, entry number 4, hyperglycemia, hyperglycemic transient, R73.9. The word transient inside the parenthesis lets us know that it is a non-essential. If the documentation states transient or not, it will not affect our code selection of R73.9. In Volume 1, we see R73.9, hyperglycemia unspecified. Since the doctor only stated hyperglycemia, we have to choose the unspecified as the type, therefore confirming that R73.9 is the correct code. Official Guidelines Level of Specificity Always report to the highest specification, which are the codes with the most characters. If a seven-character code is available, it should be your code selection. Integral Conditions Signs and symptoms can be reported when there is not a definitive DX available. However, once a DX is established, the symptoms then become integrated and cannot be coded separately. Examples Shortness of breath and pneumonia. Non-integral conditions, signs and symptoms that are not part of a definitive DX and are not treated in some form by the physician are reported separately, pneumonia and dehydration. J18.9, pneumonia. E86.0, dehydration. Not all patients with pneumonia have dehydration. Dehydration not stated as due to pneumonia. Many etiology and manifestation codes are now combination codes such as type 1 diabetic, retinopathy. E10.319, diabetes, the etiology, is a full systemic condition that can cause retinopathy, the manifestation which is a disease of the innermost sensitive layer of the eyeball. Acute and chronic conditions. When conditions are described as both acute and chronic and have separate sub-entries in the index, volume 2, sequence the acute first. Acute conditions are quick onset conditions, while chronic are long term. Pancreatitis, acute K85.9, chronic K86.1. Combination codes. If a combination code exists, we must code that instead of coding acute and chronic as separate codes. A combination code includes either two diagnosis or a DX and its manifestation or a DX with a complication. An example is K80.01, which is calculus of the gallbladder with acute cholecystitis with obstruction. This is an example of a DX and its manifestation. K80.01, calculus of gallbladder, acute cholecystitis with obstruction. Residual and cause. The word sequela is used in place of late effect, but all three words, sequela, late effect, and residual are interchangeable. They represent a condition that arises after an acute phase of an illness or injury has terminated. There is no time limit as to when to code a residual condition. Two codes are required and sequencing is important. Code first the cause of the condition, then the late effect, which is the reason why the patient has come to see the doctor today. Sequilla, late effect, residual. Residual and cause. In the alphabetical index, under the main term sequilla, find your condition in the indented subterms. Lateral means the side and bilateral means two or both sides. And the examples of mirror image anatomical sites are your two eyes, your two ears, etc. 
Laterality is now included in the code description, and the last character of the code determines which side is involved. H40.21, code H40.21 is acute angle closure glaucoma, and the last digit one represents the right eye. Two is the left eye, and if we code it with a three as the last digit, it is both or bilateral eyes. Please refer to your coding resource page, entry number five. Impending or threatened conditions are ones that have not been confirmed as a DX and have not occurred, but are only suspect. When we see either words in a medical record, look in the alphabetical index under impending or threatened. If there is a subterm for the condition, we can code it after it has been confirmed in the tabular section. If the condition is not listed under either of these main terms in the index, code the underlying condition. Reporting same diagnosis more than once. A patient can have more than one DX per encounter, but each can have only, mm -hmm. a patient can have more than one DX per encounter, but each can only be reported once. If the description includes laterality, use the single code. If no bilateral code exists, we can assign separate codes for both right and left sides.